Figure 2-2 provides a flow diagram for your risk toolkit. We will be working within this particular flow chart in later chapters as we determine not just the hazards as we're identifying and working with at this point, but then to be able to make an estimate of the risk, the severity and potential consequences and determine whether or not the organization might consider the risk tolerable or unacceptable. Who should we have reviewing the workplace? Is it just a safety function? Management and supervision, that is to say leadership, should be trained on hazard recognition and be fully incorporated into the process. Employees expand the eyes in the area. By interviewing, walking and talking and listening to employees, we can develop uh, a sense of their personal hazard awareness, what they may need to enhance their ability to understand safety, and finally get a handle on the direct knowledge and experience they have with the safety process. Last but not least, there are safe, safety and specialty disciplines that may be coming through the workplace on a periodic basis. These personnel from insurance carriers, brokers, engineering firms, etc., have mentor potential and they bring experience from other organizations that can be utilized to help break the past habits and what we would call the forest for the trees syndrome where we can't really see what's actually happening in the workplace because we've been doing things the same way for periods of time. We touched on the work order system, which may be part of your preventive maintenance program. These programs can bring a lot to the table with regard to the identification of operational issues, scheduling of inspections and looking at the documentation for quality best practices and regulatory standards that might be at issue.